Hard mode, hard mode, hard mode. Hard mode has been shoved in all of our faces, and I'm here to shove it in yours. Maybe that could have been reworded better. We're all looking for something to make Animal Crossing fun again. New Horizons has been out for three years, and we've all done everything there is to do about 20 times. Now it's up to the community to make this sandbox game entertaining while we wait on the edge of our seats for some kind of new announcement. But why did hard mode even exist in the first place? For a lot of people, especially those of us who have been nonstop playing for years, that feels weird to say, we've done everything this game has to offer. There are no more updates, and there's nothing new for you to collect if you've played a whole year. You've just been running around your island waiting for something to happen, but there's nothing. The same old beach, the same old Gulliver, the same old fish in the water. Like a typical sandbox game, it's up to you to continue to make your own fun, either with friends or by yourself, like the introvert that you are. That's where hard mode comes in. Hard mode is a game mode that exists everywhere, from board games to video games to life. It's existed for quite some time in various ways to change up how you play a game. Because the developers are apparently done bringing anything else to Animal Crossing, it's up to the community to do it for them. Nintendoc had the idea to make his own version of hard mode with the help of his community and created new rules for us to follow, truly making a way to force us to challenge ourselves. Want to sell your extra furniture items? Too bad, that's too easy. This is hard mode, after all. You can't make money easy. Instead, you have to wait for Sunday to come around. Sunday is flea market day where all the other hard mode players come to your island and bid on your items. So you better make sure you have something good to scam your friends with. I mean, to earn bells from your friends. This is one of the few ways hard mode forces the community together. It takes this very single player game of New Horizons and makes us rely on each other to proceed further in the game. Which is nice when you're able to actually pay for the extras from Nintendo like Nintendo Switch Online, but you can still participate in hard mode without NSO. Most of the rules of hard mode don't need the help of other people. You don't need online to be able to play. Like only being able to sell fish and bugs to CJ and Flick. Daily tasks like doing morning aerobics every day and purchasing at least one item from Nooks and Abel's. There are more difficult challenges like only wearing clothes that you made yourself and only being able to bury the thousand bells that you dig up for money trees. You're gonna be completely broke. This mode is no joke. Insert stupid joke here. Oh, this is a great script. Part of the challenge of this mode is you're gonna be completely broke. Unless you're scamming all your friends during flea market day. <clears throat> what if hard mode isn't for you? What if you don't want to reset your island and would rather spend your time doing something else in New Horizons? What is there to do in this game after three years? You've probably mostly done everything. If you're listening to this, I'm sure you've completed your bug and fish collection over the years. But have you finished the art wing? Maybe you have, but maybe you haven't. Go do that. Red works in annoying ways, um, mysterious ways. No, he's, he's really annoying. Maybe you want to do something crazy, like save up a billion bells, or 999,999,999 because I'm pretty sure the ABD doesn't go past that. What if you want to collect every item in the game? Speaking of challenges, that's a freaking challenge with 2.0 items and color variations, there are over 14,000 things to collect. Or do a speedrun to collect every villager photo that totally won't take 600 hours to complete. Who'd be stupid enough to do something like that? Because of New Horizons sandbox feature, the game is pretty open to anything you can think of. Which could either be a really good thing, since the game doesn't restrict you from whatever you want to do, or a really bad thing, because there is no structure. No order, no one to help you find your way to play. You have to create your own structure, make your own rules. I know you haven't finished decorating your island. If you think you have, take a walk around. I'm sure there's four spots you really want to redecorate. Or if you have Happy Home Paradise, start decorating more villager houses. Do all 407 available villagers. Got amiibo cards? Do the special characters in Sanrio Babies too. Or maybe you've decided you want to completely change island themes. How long have you had those cottage core decorations around your island? Hmm, too long. Find a new theme. Completely redo everything. This is always a really fun idea. Adds a bit of variety to your day. Instead of just fishing or just catching bugs, you're crafting, moving, thinking, looking up inspiration on the internet, crying because you'll never be as good as them, going to Cyrus 40 times to recustomize that item you changed because you decided you just hate the color, time travel a lot so you can grow a tree to the proper height, time travel too far so now you have to cut down the tree and start over, and then pat yourself on the back because your new area looks great and you did a great job. Make a rock garden. That'll take up a whole week, even if you are time traveling. Go villager hunting. Pick a cat to find for an extra long hunt. 
You can't really play Animal Crossing for the month that you're villager hunting, but hey, now you have a cute cat. Go do your catch 100 fish in a row nook mile challenge that you probably tried that one time and then decided it was too hard because you caught 94 fish and messed it up and then turned off the game for two months. Craft every single item, but first you have to actually collect every single crafting recipe. Okay, I know this seems like an impossible task and the game was purposely made so you would have a difficult time finding all the DIYs, but it's a fun challenge to try to complete. Who knows, maybe you'll find some cool new stuff to decorate that part of the island you hate so much. There are countless activities to do in the sandbox life sim game. Find what's fun for you and add a challenge or two to the way you already play. I have a feeling we're gonna have to wait a little bit for a new mainline Animal Crossing game. Enjoy the game we have now and join the rest of us in patiently, <coughs> patiently waiting for the next game to release so we can all have something brand new to play again. What are some ways you keep the game interesting for you? Let everyone know in the comments below, and if you need me, I'll be decorating my island that I've been decorating for three years. Bye!